Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Paul and earlier you saw Max on the gun. Well, believe it or not fellas, it's been three years since we returned and started with our best LPVO video from 2019. I'll leave a link if you haven't already seen it. Well, since then, as we've continued with our reviews, every time we have an LPVO in front of us, we always ask ourselves the same question. Does this LPVO belong on the best of list? And the short answer is yes, we do have some new ones and a few returning ones. So just like last time for this list, we set ourselves a budget of top end of $1,500. Generally, anything above that, we consider the premium categories. And as you guys know, we have a separate video for that. Here in this channel, we believe that everyone deserves good gear regardless of budget. So on that point, here's our list, starting with the lowest to the highest on the price point for the best LPVOs as of right now, which is September, 2022. So let's take a close look at them right now. So let's go. So if there's one way to describe the scope, it'd be punches above its own weight. And by weight, we're talking features per dollar because at a street price at around $300, this scope will make both your wallet. And once you look through it the first time, your eyes happy with your choice. And here's why. First and foremost, the glass quality is very good straight out of the Philippines glass factory. So it's a big step up from uh, Chinese based glass. At 1X or at 6X, it's more than good enough glass for both short and medium range shooting. If you wanna be picky, you'll see some distortion at the edge, but the center 75% of the glass is clear. And that's the most important when you're shouldered up to the target. And it may not have the best 1X field of view at 106 feet, but still perfectly good enough. And when you spin it up to 6X, the small center dot is good enough for shooting groups. And you also have 0.5 mil stadia on the horizontal, as well as a BDC out to 600 yards on the vertical. And Strelic does have this reticle, so be sure to use it for reference. On the exterior, it comes in at about 17.4 ounces, so it's on the lower end of LPVO weight. And the turrets are a decent quality with good feeling clicks all the way around, and they're capped for security. These clicks are spaced uh, 0.5 MOA per click, so not as precise as some others, but uh, good enough. And last but not least, it comes with an included big fat throw lever for really easy spinning of the magnification dial. At this price point though, there are some limitations. First, some users have reported some manufacturing oddities with their scopes, like some visible adhesive on the objective end. We didn't notice any on our scope, but they are out there. But one thing we did notice with ours is that once you screwed in the battery cap, uh, we couldn't remove it again since it has such a thin bezel and it was kind of stuck in place. And secondly, while we're looking down the glass, let's talk about daylight brightness or lack thereof. At max illumination, you really can't tell it's on. So I consider this illumination only usable at dusk, low light, or indoors. If you're primarily a daylight shooter, just run it black. You may be a little slower once you get into mixed lighting, but for high contrast situations like white targets and uh, black backgrounds, it'll work out just fine. So the final verdict on this scope is as long as you don't need daylight brightness, this is a great scope for those getting into LPVOs or those maybe on a budget. It's not really lacking in any of the major features other than that. So if you're outfitting a lot of rifles, this is a great economic choice. So we have a first returnee from our 2019 video. It should not come as a surprise to those who've been watching this channel. We shot this scope a ton and it just keeps going and going. Considering it's street price at $600, it's still one of the best bargains out there and gives you everything you'd want in an LPVO. And here's why we said that. Firstly, the glass quality is very good and much like the RT6, it comes straight from the Philippines factory. At 1X, the view is close enough to what you see with a Vortex Razor, especially since the field of view is larger than the RT6 at 112.5. Now at 6X, the glass is clear enough for use out to 400 yards, although you will start to notice some image fuzziness creeping in there. Secondly, this is the cheapest you'll spend and get a daylight bright dot. As you guys know from the LPVO user guide, I'll link to it. You want a bright dot so you can shoot target focused in all lighting conditions. Speaking of that reticle, you get two choices of either MOA or MIL, which is awesome. Both are simple crosshair reticles, so the center dots are tiny and group shooting is easy. Strelic has both these reticles, so take a look at their drops and see how far you need to shoot when deciding between these two. 
On the exterior, the cap turrets are excellent quality with audible clicks, and each click is a precise 0.5 MOA or 0.2 mil per click. And the brightness knob is easy to see and turn with an off position in between. There is no locking mechanism though, like it's big brother the Razer. And last but not least, Vortex has excellent lifetime warranty on their scopes. We haven't had any issues with our Vortex scopes yet, but from what others have told me, their customer service is quite excellent. And while we're talking exteriors, here's some downsides. First, this is a heavy scope at 22.7 ounces, especially for a 6X top end. This may be a deal breaker for some, and that's okay. If you want lighter, you're going to have to spend more. And while we're talking heavy, the magnification adjustment on these scopes, like the Razer, do take a little bit more force than other scopes in its class but you will get used to it once you start using a throw lever, which I consider a necessity for the scope. And speaking of that, you will have to buy a separate throw lever since it doesn't come with one. So the final word on the scope is that at its price point, you get all the features that you need, especially that bright reticle and that good glass. Vortex really nailed it when they put up the scope considering how many of these I've seen in shooters hands. But if you're in our market for a new scope and can spend a little more, let's keep talking. Okay, so you're probably wondering why we have these two lumped together. The short answer is that there are rumors that they may be the same scope. I don't know about that, but they share a lot in common, including roughly the same street price at around 850 or so. So they are a step up from the Vortex PST price-wise. So the big question is, how are these two scopes different? And is there a clear winner between those two? Well, let's check them out side by side to see what you get. First, the glass quality, instead of the very good Philippines-based glass from the PST and RT6, we've taken another step up to the highest tier, at least in this video anyways, with the Japanese glass. Staying with that comparison, you probably won't be able to tell much difference between Filipino and Japanese glass at 1X, but knowing that both these share the same Japanese glass, can we spot the differences? Well, after looking at both of them side by side, we think we can answer that question. The Trijicon Credo is a little bit clearer at 1X, especially at the edges. But at 1X, the field of view is a little wider on the Delta Striker at 116.8 versus the Credo's 113.4. And when you spin it up to 6X, you can see the Credo pull out ahead some more. If you look closely at the surrounding vegetation, the Credo is a little cleaner. Now, when it comes to a daylight bright dot, both are absolutely daylight bright, so you have no problem shooting target focus with either of the scopes. However, if you put them side by side, the striker center dot is quite a bit brighter and larger to boot. Speaking of reticles, both the striker and the Credo come with crosshair reticles. But with the striker, you can choose between two mil based reticles, depending on how many holds you want to see. In contrast, the Credo comes with just the Hunter BDC, but it still works pretty well. It's similar to the Strikers at DGMR, except it has a couple more stadia on the horizontal axis. Strelic has all three of these reticle choices if you want to take a look at them and play with the numbers. On the exterior, I think both these scopes use the same cap turrets as they look, feel, and work the same, with the Striker having 0.1 mil clicks, while the Credo having 0.25 MOA clicks. Neither of these are target turrets, so you'll want to set them and forget them. And both brightness knobs are easy to see and use with off positions in between. I think the striker feels and looks a little bit nicer with that knurling on the end cap. Regarding the magnification dial, they both come on attachable throw levers that you screw in, which is great. However, both fit in only one position on the dial and they're a little bit small. So while they're low profile, you will have to hook your thumb to spin them. But the striker's friction to turn is much smoother. It turns a lot quicker. Lastly, they differ slightly in their weight and body. The Striker is a little bit lighter at 17.9 versus the Credo's 18.9. Also, if you notice, the Striker is coated with a matte finish versus the Credo's glossier finish, if that matters to you. So now that we've had them both side by side, is there an obvious winner given they both roughly cost the same? Well, to me, I think the key differentiator is the glass quality and look to us like the Credo is a little bit better here. It's not a night and day difference, but on a graded scale, the Credo would be plus one in this category. However, it's a little bit heavier, the field of view is a little bit smaller, and you don't have as good a selection of reticles. Speaking of which, there are several Credo models available, and only one of them is daylight bright. Uh, why'd you do that, Trijicon? Hmm. Makes no sense to me. So check our links below so you can choose the right model number. Having said all that, I think selecting either of these scopes is gonna serve you really well because these are the best scopes under $1,000 right now. Two 
Vortex Razor. And we have our next returnee from our 2019 video. For those who've had this scope, I think you guys can see why it's on this list. I did my first video about the original Gen 2 almost 10 years ago now. And given that it's still being recommended among all the new LPVOs, that should tell you something. And here are some of the reasons why. First and foremost, like the Striker and Credo before it, you're looking through some superb Japanese glass. On the Razor at 1X, a field of view is so large and the bezel so thin that for guys who have been shooting red dots for years, this was an easy transition, especially with its bright daylight illumination. Consequently, you can see this LPVO being used interchangeably with red dots for those working inside CQB environments. Other distinguishing factor is its generous eye box at both 1X and 6X. Generally, most LPVOs have around three and a half to four inches eye relief. At 1X, we've always found that the Razor has dominated here when it comes to eye box. And to me, that's the biggest distinguishing factor between the Razor and the Striker and Credo combos. This doesn't mean that Striker and Credo have bad eye boxes. It's just that the Razor is a bit better. So if you're coming from red dots, it's an easier transition. And speaking of 6X, you get three choices of reticles, the standard MOA and mill reticles and the JM1 BDC, which is a simplified reticle that's perfect for a three gun or action shooting. Strelic has all three of these reticles. Take a look at the drops and see if the BDC is simple enough for your needs. I know a lot of dudes still running the JM BDC for years and shoot exceptionally well with it. On the exterior, you have the same excellent cap turrets as PST with audible clicks and each click measuring 0.5 MOA or 0.2 mils. But the brightness knob is a step up from the PST in that you now have a locking mechanism, which I found to be an underrated feature as you start moving around with your gun or throwing it in your rifle bag. It's nice knowing that it's not going to slip off the setting that you want. And lastly, you have two choices for this model, the original Gen 2 and the more recent Gen 2E. And just to be clear, they're exactly the same scope except for two things. First, the original Gen 2 is quite a bit cheaper now at around $1,000, while the newer Gen 2E is around $1,400. But it does have one downside. The first Gen 2 was a beast of a scope coming at 25.2 ounces. Really, you'd want to use that scope with the lightest mount possible as we did with these Aero Precision Ultralights. But with the newer Gen 2E, Vortex swapped out the brass battery cap for an aluminum one and then skeletonized all the brass internals. So they shaved off almost four ounces and will definitely make a difference in your wallet depending on how much you value that weight savings. And while we're talking heavy, just like the PST, the magnification dial is stiff to turn. You will have to buy a separate throw lever since it's not included. The Gen 2E does turn a little bit more smoothly than the Gen 2, and you can also send it in to Vortex for them to smooth it out even more. So given where we are in this video, I think the question most guys are asking right now is if the Vortex Razor is worth paying several hundred more than the Trujicon Credo, which is really, in my estimation, about 90% what the Razor brings to the table. I think if you already have the Credo, it won't be a worthwhile upgrade for you. But if you're starting from scratch, going with the Razor Gen 2E is a good decision given it's better eye box, better turret, brightness knob, and a longer track record. I haven't seen too many Strikers and Credos in the wild yet, but that can change. In the meantime, I still think the Razor is the best run and gun LPVO in this price range. Arms Compact PLX. Ah, we finally have ourselves a first focal plane scope and at around 1500, it's really the only first focal plane good enough to qualify for this list in my opinion. We dealt earlier with this bigger brother, the 34 millimeter Platinum 1.8. I'll link it and found that its premium features really separated itself from the rest of the primary arms pack. So given that PA took that scope, shrank it to 30 millimeters and brought its weight down to less than 17 ounces and still continued to deliver its premium features is a big win and a big surprise to us. And here are some of the reasons why. That view at 1X through its premium ED Japanese glass is brilliant and achieves very similar performance at 1X to the Razor in that regard. In fact, its field of view at 121 feet is larger than the Razor's 115.2. With very little distortion through its super clear glass and its thin bezel as well, it's very easy to mount this scope and see what you need to see to shoot quickly. And as you spin up on this first focal plane scope, at 8X you'll see that fully featured reticle in all its glory. Right now you can choose between two reticles, the M8 yards or the M8 meters, which is shown here. Both are BDC reticles, so choose the drops you like best based on what you see in Strelic. And very soon PA will offer this scope with the Griffin M8 mil reticle, so then you have all the wind holds you'll ever need in this life. The PA reticle offers easy to use auto ranging stadia to the left and right of center. And if you want to go with shoulder width ranging like an ACOG, you can also use the lines on the BDC. 
key. Having a first focal plane scope really helps as it allows you to back off when you want to have a wider field of view and more forgiving eye box while retaining accurate drops at all magnification levels. But even at 8X, we didn't think the scoped eye box was out of the ordinary when it comes to tightness. It works just fine if you want to shoot maximum magnification. Speaking of long range, on the exterior, you do have a choice of capped or target turrets, which is an excellent option. Chances are you'll still use capped turrets uh, since you'll be using the reticle and you won't be dialing. Each click is a very precise 0.1 mil, so it's very easy to get a good zero with the scope. And it does come with an included throw lever, which is great. And it moves smoothly in its 180 degree arc. So if there's one fault with this scope, is that it is not daylight bright. So at maximum brightness level is not aim point of vortex razor bright. So when you're shooting to mixed lighting conditions, it may be slower for you to pick up the center dot. However, given the time we spent shooting with the scope, we didn't find it particularly necessary given his large horseshoe at one X. So for close targets, just splash that ring onto the center and start getting fast effective hits. In my mind, I think this scope and the Razor belong in two slightly different shooting rigs. The Razor on your run and gun zero to 400 yard rig. For the primary arm, it works best 50 yards and out when you don't need those extra milliseconds of speed, but you will need first full complaint capability for long range shooting with its fully featured reticle. So a more general purpose, slower shooting hunting type rig would be better home for this scope. All right, fellas, that's it. That's our list. So we're finally caught up for 2022. So what do you guys think? Well, I tell you what, usually with these best of lists, as we learned from the other videos, we don't usually satisfy everybody and that's okay. We consider ourselves just regular shooters, just like you, but we like to evaluate new gear and see if it helps us with our performance. And if it does, we leave our thoughts with you and hopefully it helps you. So that's it from us. If this video did help you, do us a favor and like, comment, and share as it does help this small channel. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you guys again in three years.